In South Dakota, a dance. In Hawaii, a piece of artwork. And in Alberta, Canada, a song. This one sang by Quaid Mountain Horse, just seven years old. He's been singing like, gosh, since the time he could talk. He's singing on the social distance power group on Facebook. I love to sing. This time of year is when many tribal communities host powwows, a time to showcase Native traditions. Native peoples have been gathering and celebrating for eons. We congregate and we celebrate at events called powwows. Um, they're exceptional social events. Which historically have been inspirational, has been a way for Native American people to get through challenging times or to keep you uplifted to keep you grounded, to keep you connected. But most powwows have been canceled due to the pandemic. We've had this taken away, and but we will not be deterred. We'll find a way. And so they did. Stephanie Hebert, Dan Simons, and Whitney Wren Counter created the social distance powwow group on Facebook to bring virtual powwows to life and to help with healing. I'm dancing for in this time, there's a lot of folks in our Native community who are sick or their family members have tested positive. And very sadly, several of our members have reported that they've lost family to the virus. And another thing that dancers do is we pray. We pray for healing, we pray for strength, and we, we pray for our communities and we pray over our people. Some Native communities have been hit particularly hard, including the Navajo Nation, which saw hundreds of cases by mid-April. Instead of being defeated in, in the COVID-19 pandemic, we felt like it was important to do something to try to uh, find a place for people to come. He says the group is a way to uplift people and keep everyone connected through Native American or Indigenous song, dance, and art. I knew it was going to be big because powwow people, we live for it. But they never expected it to take off so quickly. We had no idea. Within a week, we had about 60,000 people at our first powwow. Now, the Facebook group has members from around the globe. It certainly blew uh, our minds out of the water in terms of how many people are on this group and in how many different parts of the world. I mean, Alaska, Australia, you know, that's amazing. Quaid's parents never expected such a big response to their son's video either. Oh, I was, I was so mm -hmm. amazed. Quaid was amazed. And, uh, and you felt likes. Like yeah, he's he's more interested in the likes. <laughs> Over 1,400 of them. But it's much more than just the numbers. It's time for us to be seen and heard. And that's kind of what this movement has brought. You know, it's a chance for us to be seen and heard and people are seeing it and, and feeling it. And a lot of them, for the first time, have opened their eyes and their minds and their hearts to indigenous songs, dances, uh, art. Uh, storytelling. And it's finally a movement uh, for Natives by Natives. And it all comes back to being connected to one another. The ways that Native people gather. During a time that it's needed the most. Are so family oriented and friend oriented and we, we thrive on those social connections. During this time of pause, during this time of change, we're kind of coming back to what really is important to us, and that's family. And that's our connection to other things in this world. All three of us now are just blown away by the positivity this has brought and the healing that this has brought. We have a saying in our language, we say mitakuye oyasi, which means all my relations, that we're all related, we're all connected in this world. And as for Quaid, I, might, I like making people happy. He'll continue doing just that by connecting people through the songs he sings at home in Canada that echo all around the world. In Phoenix, Jennifer Alvarez, Cronkite News.